please welcome UF grad, a Emmy Award-winning meteorologist and game show Hall of Famer, Rich Fields, to this episode of Night Talks. I almost stood up and looked for the guy you were introducing. I wanted to see who it was. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah, nice to course. meet you. Great to be here. It sounds like you had a very smooth transition from college to career, but were there any struggles along the way? Yeah, health. Health was a, a huge issue for me. My, uh, I got here to the University of Florida, and you know, you're, you're single and you're free as a bird, but I wasn't messing around or anything like that, but I had a, 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 a problem pop up, and I went to the infirmary right here on campus, and I said, hey, you know, what's going on? And, and uh, the doctors there, you know, took a look at me, and, and uh, I, had a, I had a testicle that started swelling up. And they were like, oh, gee, you know, looks like a urinary tract infection. I was like, uh, it, it can't be, because <laughs> I, you know, uh, unless there's some other way of getting these. And they were like, well, we're going we're gonna to start you with this round of antibiotics. It's going to last, of course, you know, whatever weeks it is, and you'll finish that and come on back, blah, blah, blah. Well, it just kept getting bigger and bigger, and I went back to them. They were like, huh, wow, so it's not a urinary tract infection. And, you know, we don't know what it is. We think you should go in town and see a, a private physician. And so I did. I saw a doctor here. It was up on University Boulevard North at the time. I'm sure it's long gone, but uh, he took one look at me and he was like, this is a tumor. I was like, what? I mean, that was like the first time in my life that anybody around me or any, you know, uh, within any proximity of me and my family to, to have somebody say tumor. And he was like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you, uh, I'm going to send you over to Shans and let's get this thing looked at, biopsied. And I didn't even know what that meant. Honest to God, I didn't know what that meant. And so I go get over to Shan's teaching hospital, and, and they were like, look, um, we're not going to do this here. Um, we're actually going to send you to Morton Plant, which, thank God, it's, that's in my hometown of Clearwater, Florida, Morton Plant Hospital, to have this removed. And, and so I go down, and, and they remove the tumor, they biopsy it, and it's, uh, it's malignant, as opposed to benign. Uh, it's malignant, and um, they said, well, you know, you had this thing so long, it was misdiagnosed. Uh, we're afraid that you may have milked the tumor, so we need to start doing CAT scans on you. And it's like, you know, now it's really starting to pile up, you know, instead of just having something now taken out, I think, or, or antibiotics gone away, it didn't happen, taken out, okay, the problem's done. No, and now it's, now it's this ongoing care, you know, and uh, CAT scans and stuff. And, and I came back up to school here and did the CAT scans at Shands, and uh, the first one came back and it and I and it looked clean. It looked like I was okay. And so you know, hey, you need to do these every three to six months. Make sure you come back. So, you know, I I, I think I was a freshman, maybe sophomore, when the first thing popped up of going to the infirmary. So I I dealt with it most all of my college life. This this thing hanging over me, and my senior year. Uh, I took another CAT scan at Shands, and um, that station outside of Denver had already responded. And yeah. they said, look, you know, the opening's now. I know you said you don't graduate for another month or two or whatever it was, but the job is now. So I went. And uh, I was staying in an apartment outside of Denver, didn't even have any furniture. I mean, it was my first couple days there. And I'm um, sleeping on the floor in the living room in a sleeping bag that I had in the back of my 1979 orange Ford Pinto that I drove out there with. Fire trap, look it up. Google, <laughs> Google, orange, Google Ford Pinto, folks. Fire trap. <laughs> they would get run into, because the, the, the gas tank was back behind the vehicle. And any, so. any rear end, boom. <laughs> and so here I'm driving this fire trap across the country. And uh, so I'm sleeping in this, uh, this apartment in Denver and I can remember it was re like really early in the morning. Boom, 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 boom. And I opened the door, and it's this woman standing there, and she says, Rich? And I said, yeah. And I thought maybe it was management. I, I didn't know, you know, the apartment. And she says, my name is such and such. I, I work at the radio station that you're going to work for. I said, oh. I thought, Hello. are they here to pick me up? I mean, what the hell? Yeah. You know, I didn't even know what it was for. And she said, your dad called the station. He's trying to get a hold of you. I didn't have a phone. There were no cell phones. Yeah. Can you imagine life like that? No, I don't think See? most of us could, honestly, honestly. <laughs> I long for those days again, uh, just so I don't have to have it on me. But uh, she says, your dad called the radio station. He's trying to get a hold of you, and apparently it's very important. He wants you to call him, like, right away. Do you want to come down to my apartment and call? 
And immediately, I thought it was my mom. I thought something happened with my mom, and I was shook, and I, and I just I, I dismissed her offer to use her phone downstairs because I didn't want to be around her to get this news, you know. Yeah. And I said, no, no, thank you very much. You know, uh, I'll, I'll call. I'm just waking up. I'll call him as soon as I can. Okay, well, if you need to use my phone, fine. I said, there was a mall across the street, and I knew I could go over there. There were these things called pay phones back then. And uh, are they, they used to still have them? <laughs> yeah. Are there pay phones still? Yeah. Because we looked for one in New York City one time. We couldn't find a pay phone <laughs> anywhere. No, they are. Oh, man. So anyway, I said, uh, I said oh, okay, you know, I'll use the phone at the mall, blah, blah, blah. And so I did. I went, uh, I went over to the mall, and I called my dad, and I said, hey, dad, what's up? And he said, uh, where are you at? I said, I'm uh, across the street from my apartment. What's, what's up? And he said, well, you know, why don't you go, you know, do you know anybody at the station? I said, well, just the manager I met, you know, like the day before. He's like, well, I said, tell me, what's up? Is it mom? He said, no. Um, Shan's teaching hospital called, and on your last CAT scan, you're loaded. I was like, in my head, I was like, what? You know, and I was like, not now. Yeah. And uh, it makes me emotional. I mean, a diagnosis on top of everything you're already juggling. Yeah, and you think now you're out of it all and, and, and everything's good and, you know, life's going to start. That was a blow. That was, that was difficult. To make a long story short, Dad, Dad jumps on a plane and uh, he comes out to Denver and... Uh, we go to the Eleanor Roosevelt Cancer Institute to have it all taken care of, and ah, oh, just just a huge ordeal. Massive surgery. Cut me from bottom of my rib cage all the way down. They take everything out because they need to get at lymph nodes back there. And uh, okay, darkest day, probably that one. Right it was literally a dark day. It was uh, it was going to snow in Denver that day. It was the sky was dark. What was running through your head that day about those goals you set as a child? Uh, just that, just like you know, you got to be kidding me. You know, I'm 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 just I'm finally on this path. I'm what I want to do. I'm I'm ready. Yeah, Let's you go. know, I got my first big radio job and. You think, oh, life's great. And, you know, just something else, you know. It's like, wow, when is this going to leave me? When is this problem going to leave me? So, yeah, that's probably, well, <laughs> so I'm at the Eleanor Roosevelt Cancer Institute, um, prep for surgery. And I'm laying on a gurney in a hallway in the basement of this massive facility. And they, I was already groggy. They already had given me something. And I remember freezing. I remember my toes were freezing. Yeah, they got a little, you know, blanket on the gurney over you. But you've, you've, you've been in these places. I mean, you're freezing, literally freezing. And I remember kind of, you know, waking up. And I, I looked up in this hallway, and I looked around, and, and there were all these empty beds around me, you know, and I was like the only one laying there. And I thought, you know, what the hell? And they told me I was first one in the morning. I was going to be first surgery in the morning. And um, I kind of I woke up from this groggy daze, and, and I remember looking up, and there was a clock, one of these old hospital clock sticking out from the side of the wall, you know, round, completely round. It's kind of sticking out from the side of the wall in this hallway. Mm -hmm. I remember it, I looked at it and it said 530. And I remember them telling me You're, you were first surgery. You were, you were going to be, you know, 536 o'clock. And I thought, oh boy, you know. And, 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 and it, you know, dad wasn't allowed down there. And here again, all alone. And that's when you start making deals with God. So 
second darkest day right there.